Okay, smokers, Drew and one here, and today we are going to be booting a Macintosh 512K off of an SD card. You probably think I'm crazy for trying to get every computer I own to start up off of some solid state medium, and you would be correct. I'm damn crazy. So this is the Macintosh 512K. The second Macintosh in a long line of Macintoshes. So it's as close to the original as you're gonna get. Or I'm gonna get, anyway. So for those of you wondering about what was going on in the last video, you probably were thinking I was running this off of some floppy disks or something. But there's a slight problem. The disk. It won't go in. Well, good thing I have that external floppy disk drive that, you know, comes with all these guys. That would be all fine and dandy, wouldn't it? This doesn't work either. So what's going on? Something wrong with my Mac? Well, kinda. See, after 30 or so years, the grease and lubrication inside of the automatic eject mechanism within the floppy disk drive is completely frozen, and the only thing that's pushing the disk back out is a small spring that's supposed to open the floppy cover. So it is possible to disassemble the external floppy disk drive, which I did, uh, to little success. I wasn't able to get any of its functionality back, so I was at an impasse. Working Mac 512K, but no way to load any software onto it. So I did some Googling, and after a little bit of searching, I came across this little beauty. So this is the floppy disk emulator, built by Steve Chamberlain from his Big Meso Wires website. It is literally a Macintosh floppy disk to SD card adapter with built-in file system browser for choosing your disk image on the SD card. So you can have an entire library of floppy disk images right at your fingertips. It is a dream come true for anyone with a Macintosh of this age. So for those of you who want to know how this thing works, Let's take a look and have the proper first time sticky screen protector thing removed. So from here you can navigate file system directories right at your fingertips, right from this printed circuit board to select a system to boot the Macintosh. So let's go to system disks. As you can see, it has system disks all the way up to system 8, which is pretty much outside our grasp at the moment. So let's start with 1.1. Now, as you can see, it's showing a status on the emulated floppy disk drive and shows what track it's currently reading. And as you can see in the background, the Mac 512K is booting up. And it really is that simple. The refresh rate doesn't do this too much justice, but you can see that there's a working finder now on the screen. But of course, this isn't just for use with system disks. There's also a large variety of games and other utilities that have been included in this SD card. So unfortunately, since we can't just yank this cable out, since it'll probably damage the device, we need to power off and power back on the Macintosh every time we want to reload an image. The floppy disk emulator is powered by the Macintosh, so the only way to turn it on is to turn on the Macintosh. Here are a couple of games that came with the SD card, some of which you may recognize. And not all of them are playable, since some of these images are 800 and 1440k or 1.4 megabyte floppy disk images which are incompatible with the 512k Mac which can only take 400k floppies. 
Now, since the original Macintoshes didn't have hard drives, every single piece of software that was loaded into them had to have a corresponding system software to boot the machine before the actual program, app, game, or whatever you want to call it, could be loaded. Alright, so I'm going to be running through some of the images that came on the micro SD card that shipped with the floppy disk emulator. Starting out in the apps directory, there is a start out with a disk called fetch. And we can't use it because it's 800k, hypercard, 1440k, kid picks, I know that one doesn't work, Mac draw, I think that's just like Mac paint, we'll see in a sec. Yeah, well, that's that doesn't work. Okay. I already seen Mac Paint and Mac Write, but let's look at it again. All right, so on the disc here we have uh, Mac Paint, Mac Write, and of course the little thank you thing I did in the last video. So here's Mac Paint. So this is buttery smooth Mac Paint. Oh lord! I mean, this is just, this is just unprecedented. You know, it's. I mean, even when you're going like that, it, it doesn't, you don't get a lot of angles, oh, well, there's some angles, but like, you barely get any noticeable angles, this is super smooth on like a 30-year-old machine, it's just, Steve Jobs just was just like, make this perfect, and uh, it, it happened, okay, it, it happened, it's, this is probably one of the best monochrome drawing programs in the world. Many artists still use it to this day to create all sorts of fun stuff. It just about covers it for the most part. So yeah, that's that. Don't want to save. So here's MacWrite. So if you're concerned, thinking it's not doing anything, you can just you know look at the little green light. There we go. Very noisy, but completely awesome. Okay, posh. And full keyboard. Uh, you can, of course, change the font size. Font, well, comes with only three fonts, but uh, you can change the font size. Let me change the font size. Format. Style. Here we go. 24 point. As big as it gets. So you can see that uh, this would be a nice little machine to uh, print out shit with. Because um, I really can't imagine myself actually writing a paper with this. However, I might actually do it just to say that I ac actually wrote this on an original Macintosh, and then the person I submitted it to would be like, oh my god, this guy is like so cool because he can write this on an original Macintosh. So I don't know if you were able to actually hear any of that, but oh shit. Command A doesn't select all. In fact, that wasn't even thought of as a feature at this point, which was... Memory used 1%. I wonder what that would say in a 128K Mac. Uh, version 1.0 doesn't even have a date. It's weird. So just assume that it's 1984, because if we go up here and... You can use the calculator while you're using Mac right if you want. Well, that's it. Nothing else. Nothing else is allowed. Save changes before... Oh, oops. That's not what I wanted to do. Now I'm going to have to open it again. It'll take about six weeks. So yeah, the other cool feature about it that I didn't actually show before, uh, that you can actually save things. It does actually write to the drive. 
you can, uh, you know, save things. Now, of course, you're limited to the 400K, but they are read-write images, so the Macintosh thinks it's just a regular floppy drive, and bam, it saves it. But how entertaining can Mac write actually be? For me, it's pretty damn entertaining, but let's just assume that you're not entertained by that, so let's do something a little bit more fun. Or, at the very least, go to the next image in the list. Unfortunately, only about a fraction of the actual see the paper, actual images on the disk are usable, because a good number of them are 800k floppies and above, as mentioned many times before. Go to the next one, Mac Terminal. what I would do at the terminal, I guess, connect to the interwebs, and... Yep, that's how you connect to the interwebs. You'll probably say, oh, you don't have a modem connected, or some crap. It would be cool to sort of hook this up to an actual, I don't know, phone, um, dial the local pizza place, I guess this is how you gotta do it, dial, now calling, what, no modem is connected, oh, well, big revelation there.